Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Man to Man Coverage Podcast. I'm your host, Tanner, here with my good friend and co host, Mason. What's up, guys? And uh, Mason, how are you uh, holding up today? Pretty good, pretty good. How about yourself? Pretty good. Hope you're doing better than the Chiefs defense. But <laughs> um, today, yeah, offensive line. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um. Today, uh, we'll be recapping not the Super Bowl. We can talk about it real quick, but not too much to talk about the big game. So not that the season's done. We're gonna be recapping all 32 teams. This video is gonna be AFC, and then part two of this is gonna be NFC. Um, Mason, before we jump in to the AFC recap with all of those 16 teams, uh, do you have anything you would like to say about the, the Super Bowl? Um, it's an F-tier Super Bowl. So if you guys watched <laughs> the tier list uh, last, last video, it's an F-tier Super Bowl. That's all I have to say about it. Okay. I like it a bit more than you do. I probably would have like C-tier. It wasn't close, but at least the – Buccaneers offense was fun to watch and I, don't know, I really liked the halftime show with the weekend um, the most entertaining thing was the guy who streaked on the field <laughs> <laughs> yeah that he got in the end zone more than the Chiefs <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was interesting to say the least but today I want to get into a recap starting with a team that the Buccaneers got the other Super Bowl win against the Raiders what a transition that was but we'll be starting in the AFC West um, with the Las Vegas Raiders. So I'll go first. This Raiders team was very basic this year. That's not a bad thing. Their offense was good at moments. Derek Carr is kind of like the new Andy Dalton, if you will, where he's not bad. He's not elite. He'll make some good plays. Carr was probably better than average this season. Uh, Josh Jacobs is good. Darren Waller is Probably up there with Kelsey and Kittle as some of the elite tight ends. Probably those three are the most elite. But the Raiders had some fun games. Like, look at that Dolphins game where they lost was still fun. That win over the Saints they had. You know, they had some good moments, but their defense is just atrocious. So, going forward, they fire the D.C. Okay, but they really need to, I think, get a handle on that defense if they want to make a Super Bowl. Because I think the offense could win a Super Bowl, to be honest they just need the defense yeah I like I really like how you made the point Derek Carr is kind of like an Andy Dalton where he he's not amazing but he's also better than average especially this past year he put up some career numbers um the pay uh, excuse me the Raiders they had a a really good start to the season I believe they were six and three at one point and then they just fell off a cliff um, and they ended the season about 500. And I think the best thing they need is a, def- a better defense, which is why they fired their uh, defensive coordinator. But they also just need more consistency from the whole team because a lot of teams you'll see that the ones that make this, like, go far in the playoffs, they've been consistently good pretty much all year. The ones who fall off or don't make the playoffs usually are the teams that are pretty inconsistent. You know, they'll have a great win. Like the Saints, uh, they had a great win against the Saints, but then – They'll lose to the Dolphins when they're up by a touch, uh, excuse me, touchdown left, and then Ryan Fitzpatrick throws a crazy pass. It's just they need more consistency. Yeah, you also got games like the Falcons where they just completely blew it. Mm-hmm. Um, ironic that they play the Falcons blowing something, but <laughs> 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 it's usually the Falcons doing that with the leads. Anyways, I like what you bring up about consistency. Um, do you think Derek Carr is the answer at quarterback? Because that's kind of the debate with this team, I feel like, and where the talk points are going. For me, it's like we've seen quarterbacks like Jimmy Garoppolo and stuff get to the Super Bowl. I think Carr can. I think he just needs more weapons. Nelson Aguilar broke out. But you, Henry Ruggs was very inconsistent. So I think Carr could. It just is this the team for him. Um, I honestly feel that if there's no upgrade available, that they should just keep Carr because I don't think they should just actively seek a better quarterback because Carr had a really good season this past year. And if you just, like, get another uh, weapon or two around him, I think he won't be that elite quarterback, I don't think, because I think he's kind of hit his ceiling. But his ceiling is a very solid quarterback. I mean, you see guys like the Eli 
by Mannings, the Jimmy Garoppolo's, um, Joe Flacco's, those guys make the Super Bowl and they can win it sometimes. And I think Derek Carr can be one of those guys. Um, but I actually really like him. Him and John Gruden feel like I feel like they have a really good relationship too. That the, they just get better um, uh, each season, which I really like to see from uh, both of them. Yeah, that was a really good point you brought up about people like Flacco and Manning making it. Uh, going on to a more exciting quarterback with the Los Angeles Chargers. I was one of those people that was very low on Herbert. You can go watch my mock drafts, but I had him going around two to the Steelers, not high him at all. He comes out here, week two gets a start against the Chiefs, and then goes on to have great games against the Buccaneers with Brady, Breeze and the Saints, and then Mahomes and the Chiefs. He didn't win any of them, but he looked fantastic, and I think Herbert's the bright spot going forward. This often says the Chargers was really fun to watch, and they're just a really good team. Um, the defense could have been better, and I think going forward, you know, if the Brandon Staley move that does help the defense, I just got to think you got to really make sure you hit with Herbert because we're seeing now young quarterbacks like Watson and Winston stuff, and they're not having the best situation. So the Chargers' organizational record of success is very low. You know, they couldn't get a Super Bowl with Phil Rivers. So I just hope they don't mess up with Herbert. I think that they're either going to be a team like the Bills where they build upon the foundational success of what they had this season or collapse. I don't know which way it's going, but I hope they have good success because Herbert's really fun to watch. Um, I think the Chargers, they didn't have the best year, but I feel like if I'm a Chargers fan, I'm really excited what I saw from this team just because – you have a lot of great weapons surrounding Herbert. You have, then you have Herbert. You so you go from Philip Rivers for fifteen plus years. Then now you have Herbert. Really, the next year, that's a really um, great transition from quarterback. And the Chargers finished top ten in both defense and offense last year, but they just didn't get the wins because there's just really poor coaching in the fourth quarter, bad adjustments, stuff of that nature. And I feel if Brandon Staley, you know, if he can get the job done, I think this team has a really high ceiling. Plus, next year you get Derwin James back. So, I, I think their Chargers, they kind of met expectations this year, but I think they have a really bright future. Ooh, I really like that. Um, um, what, um, what did you say? I forgot. <laughs> Derwin James. The yeah, Derwin I really James. like Derwin James. I like him a lot, and I think that he could be a big part. I forgot he was coming back. I remember the injury. I just didn't know how soon um, that was. Um, so moving on to the Chiefs um, as the next AFC West team for the recap. This was a team that they've gotten to the point where the offense is just so good, it's kind of boring. It's like, yeah, they're going to put up 30 points a game. Cool. I like the team. Not a lot to say here, even in the Super Bowl loss. Um, I'll touch on it briefly here. I just thought that the offensive line collapsed, and I thought the play calling could have been better. If this team can re-equip, with the offense and get some defensive playmakers in there. I think you can have a lot of Super Bowls. If not, I'm getting a lot of Legion of Boom vibes with this. You know, you have this up-and-coming team. They have a big Super Bowl. You know, Seattle um, beat the Broncos back in 2013. Chiefs beat the Niners, and then you lose to Tom Brady. So what's step three? We saw the Legion of Boom collapse in Seattle, and I'm afraid that could happen on Kansas City. A lot of people are very high in Mahomes. He's an S-tier quarterback, one of the best. But will the Chiefs be able to do that, you know, and see if they can have that success? I don't know. Um, I think this year is going to be very telling for that Kansas City team. Um, I think the Chiefs kind of met expectations. I feel a lot of people have them as a Super Bowl favorite, rightfully so, just because when you have Mahomes, you probably should be the Super Bowl favorite most years. Um, I think that – the offensive line really sold that last game. But if the Chiefs, honest overall, had a really great year, um, just couldn't get it done that last game, which hurts. But they have that ring last year, and it's not very common in the NFL to go back to back. The last time that happened was uh, 2003 and 2004, the New England Patriots. So the, uh, the Chiefs shouldn't uh, beat themselves up too much. I just feel that they need a lot more depth on that offensive line because it just seemed like one guy went down and then all the dominoes fell, and then Mahomes is running for his life. But I feel like overall the Chiefs had a fantastic year. Yeah, I like what you said about the dominoes falling. That's a really good 
um, comparison for that. Um, I'll still have them as favorites, but we'll kind of see where that goes. So the past two teams, um, both the Raiders and um, – well, I was strong with my feelings on the Raiders, and then both Los Angeles and Kansas City have been kind of um, mixed about. However, I'm going to be very set on the Broncos. I think this team has – outlook. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really don't like a lot of their pieces. I like Drew Locke, his rookie year last year, terrible. One of the worst quarterbacks in my opinion. Vic Fangio, I do not believe is the correct head coach at all. I think he is terrible at his job. I know that's going to make a lot of people angry because they like Vic Fangio. Yeah, he's a great defensive coordinator, but he's not a great head coach. And people want to say they have these injuries. Well, guess what? The Niners had a lot of injuries, and they still put up a fight while most teams steamrolled through the Broncos. So I'm not excited for this team at all, if you guys can tell. <laughs> the only way I can see – I think Vic Fangio should have been fired because there's some good pieces like Van Jefferson, um, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton can do some great things. But I don't think this is a coaching staff to put them together. So – I could, at the height, maybe see Denver enters like the seventh seed and win one game. But in terms of the Super Bowl, I think this is not the right staff nor the right roster. I really like what you said about Vic Bangio. I feel like he he's in a situation where he's a fantastic defensive coordinator. But he'll never be able to take that next step as a head coach, kind of like Todd Bowles. He was a fantastic uh, DC with the Cardinals, was the head coach for the Jets, really couldn't get it done, but then – had a phenomenal performance in the Super Bowl. Just someone like of that that just can really um, take that head coaching position and kind of elevate his players, all of his players, not just uh, the defense. But touching more on the Broncos, I feel like really missed the mark this year. Um, a lot of teams deal with injuries. It's just not an, it's not a good excuse unless you're even if you're. The, you know, I would only give the excuse to the Niners, but even then, like they had a pretty decent year for all the injuries they dealt with, but the Broncos, um, <laughs> we had Drew Locke. He was absolutely disappointing. I'm so sorry, Broncos fans, that I was never really a big believer in him, and I'm not convinced even more. I'm actually less convinced because of how terrible he was this year. Um, especially, he has some pretty good weapons. I mean, Cortland Sutton was out most of the year, but you still got Fant, Judy, uh, Gordon, and Lindsey. That's a pretty solid core. Um, you give Locke this last year. If he doesn't get it done, you – you got to find someone else. Yeah, so it seems like we're both down on Denver. I was, I'm was, i higher on Drew Lock than you are, but I agree. He has these weapons. He's got to do something. So, of all the AFC West next season, I think the Chiefs will win it. I could see the Chargers being a team like the Cardinals this previous year where they win eight, nine games. Raiders around there in Denver, I think, will be bad. So, um, team does have an easier schedule. Are these teams, they play the NFC East and the AFC North. So, could have some winnable games, but a lot of those teams are rebuilding. Speaking of which, we'll go to the AFC North, where we have the four teams, the Steelers, Ravens, Bengals, Browns. Um, so as a Ravens fan, a lot of you are probably expecting me to trash the Steelers, but I'm not going to all the way. When they're winning these games and being undefeated, a lot of people are like, oh, they're against easy teams. My thing is like a win's a win. And they fell off during kind of the end of the season where I feel like that teams cut on to them. But that has happened before. Not that many teams go undefeated in the season. So I think, you know, sometimes the Steelers are really dislikable, which I will agree to that. But I think they got sometimes too hated. I think Mike Tomlin is up there for coaches. He's really great. I thought Big Ben had his nice moments. Overall, this was a team that I feel like would kind of their ceiling. They're a team that has a really good defense and an offense that's very situational in the game. I feel like some games you had, you know, Chase Claypool, Juju, all, you know, the running game going. Big Ben was in a rhythm looking like him old, his old self. But then you had other games where you could hardly get things going. So I think this Steelers team will be competitive next season without a doubt. I just don't know if they'll be a Super Bowl winning organization anytime soon but I, I still think they'll be a really good team kind of like the Seahawks have been the uh, last couple of years um the Steelers they had a fantastic start to the year 10 and 0 and I believe they finished the season one in five technically one in six because they lost in the playoffs so they had a fantastic start 
And then it just seemed like teams started to figure them out, especially that offense. Um, the defense kind of got worn down, it seemed. Then it just started tanking. And uh, um, I feel like the Steelers had a great year still, 11-5 and five, or 10-6, and six, what I think it was 11-5. and five. It was a fantastic year no matter what. Um, I just feel that they have a little too many antics. I I know it's a meme that Juju and Claypool are TikTok boys, but I actually feel like it kind of hinders the whole team because you don't want to have a target on your back. It's just not something you want to do. Um, Cause you like, for example, Von Bell, uh, Bengal safety before the game, he said, he's not going to dance on our logo. Juju dance on the logo. Uh, like 30 plays in the game. Von Bell just absolutely rocks Juju fumble. <laughs> and that the Bengals with Ryan Finley beat the Steelers. Like that just shows how terrible of an end of a season they really had. Um, I feel like it was really disappointing towards the end, but I feel like it, it's like a weird future because I don't know if Big Ben's coming back, so I'm a little iffy on what they're going to do. I think they'll make playoffs no matter who's quarterback, really, if they get a decent guy, um, but their future is a little weird without knowing if Big Ben's coming back. Yeah, Ben um, said that um, one of the games, I forgot which one it was, I think it was that Bengals one, he's like, Big Ben sure tied at halftime. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> you know, Big Ben <laughs> He's had some great years. He's an all-time great, you know, <laughs> these quarterbacks, you know, from this class, Eli, Phil Rivers, you know, he's great. But I just think it's time for him to retire. And I do like how you mentioned Juju. That has become a meme. <laughs> but, you know, you know, fun jokes aside, I feel like sometimes NFL players try, you know, they get in the NFL, they feel this pressure of being a big star celebrity and I feel like Juju and Chase Claypool try to live up to it so like you said a very weird future um, next up we have the Ravens uh, I'll keep this short and sweet I've done a lot of videos and talking they just need to get a offensive some more offensive line pieces and some wide receivers that's cool they can beat up on teams like the Jaguars Giants Washington and score 30 points have these you know, all fantastic stats with Lamar Jackson. Yay. But when it comes to the big games, I don't think they're there. Um, Lamar Jackson had a nice year, but I feel like that the past two seasons, we've kind of seen a lot of the same things from Lamar. He can run. He has some nice throws here and there, but you need to be a lot more consistent in the NFL, and he's not there. So I'll keep it short, but they just need to upgrade the offense. I think the defense is uh, pretty much set to go. I'll keep it short and sweet because you basically hit on everything I agree with. I think their defense is really good. I feel like you can win a Super Bowl with that defense. I really like uh, John Harbaugh as a coach. Um, I feel like Raven fans, I feel like sometimes they like him, but I really feel like he's a really great coach. Um, at the end of the day, there's only one thing really holding the Ravens back, and this dude Lamar has literally no one to throw to. I mean, his receivers can't get open. It seems like he he's running for his life half the time trying to find someone to throw to, and that's why he runs so much is because – you know, Marquise Brown and Willie Sneed aren't just getting it done. They got to go and get that big uh, name free agent or uh, draft guy. So, yeah. Um, but I feel like they still had a good season overall. Um, Lamar finally got his first playoff win, which was really great to see. Um, but I really – I think I really like this young core that they're building um, in Baltimore. Yeah, Steel, so if you're watching it, watching this. But uh, I want Alan Robinson on the Ravens. <laughs> oh. Hey, Rob. Um, <laughs> that would be – That'll be cool. Um, moving on to the Bengals. Not a lot here to say. The AC North, I think, kind of explained itself. Joe Burrow looked really good, and I think that he establishing great chemistry with T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon. Don't think Zach Taylor is the guy. He's a great coordinator, now the coach. Um, defense, you just need more pieces. Not really a lot to say. Um, in our mock draft, 1.0, 2.0, uh, whenever – we do it. I might have the Bengals going with a defensive player because I feel like their offense is there. They scored a lot of points this season, even with some backups. So I think they just need a better defense. They were fun to watch. Burrow, I thought, was pretty good this year. Um, so, yeah, that's what I have to say about uh, Cincinnati. I think they could be a good team next year if they make those big moves. I think I like really liked what the Bengals situation is. Now you have Joe Burrow. I, I honestly fully expect him to recover from that. Um, injury he had really sad that it happened his first year honestly um, but I really Joe Burrow seems like a guy who's just going to do whatever it takes to just keep getting better 
Um, I really love T what T Higgins did. You got Joe Mixon coming back, but I really like what you said as well. I am in full agreement. I do not think Zach Taylor is a head coach. Um, he could prove me wrong this year, but if he doesn't, I think he just got to get someone else. I'm not really a big fan of him. And the defense, it's improving. That's all I got to say about their defense. It's definitely improving, but I feel like they just need a couple more years and some more good drafts, and then Bengals can be in playoff slash contention for the big game. Yeah, I think they could definitely get there, and I agree Joe Burrow will recover. Next up, the Browns. I really like this team. I love how Kevin Stefanski won Coach of the Year. This offense is so fun to watch. Baker was playing in a rhythm. These wide receivers were coming to play. Um, I thought the defense was good. A bit underwhelming, but still you have those playmakers. And then my favorite part of this team, Nick Chubb. I have loved Nick Chubb. He's probably in my top, or top tier of players. He is so fun to watch as a running back. He has an excellent mixture of speed strength, skill, catching, you know, you could go on and on. I personally think he's currently a top five back. I'd like to hear what you say, Mason, but I just really like the Browns this season. I think they have a super bright future ahead of them, and I think they could easily win the Super Bowl within the next three years. Yeah, um, the Browns, I really like this team a lot too. I feel like they got the right guy in their coach. Baker Mayfield, don't think he'll ever be that elite status, but I think he can be like a Derek Carr or someone like that where he can still get the job done at the end of the day and make some big plays for his team. Um, I really like how what they did this year offensively, lots of running, um, really took pressure off Baker, which I think is what he needed. Miles Garrett, fantastic player. Um, Nick Chubb, like you said, this dude will either run around you or run over you. There's no in between. He's just going to do either one of those, and he's a fantastic running back. Um, but I really like the future of this team. I honestly think they could be like a Super Bowl contender next year if they just keep improving. Yeah, this is giving me a lot of Eagles rhymes when they win the Super Bowl, just getting that rhythm offensively. Where would you put Nick Chubb? Because I think him and Dalvin Cook on the same level. I think Derrick Henry is better. I'll put Dalvin Cook ahead of him. Christian McCaffrey overall, I would say yes. And then I'll go Chubb and then maybe Alvin Kamara and then, like, Saquon at six. Do you agree with that, Mason? I feel like I'm forgetting someone. But Nick Chubb is up there for me for running backs. I would say Chubb's either four or five. It it would be a debate between Alvin Kamara and him. It just depends on what you value more, in my opinion, because they both bring really different um, um, things to the table. But he's so good. He's such a good player, like – the Browns got so lucky getting him in the second round. I mean, he's a fantastic player. Yeah. Um, viewers know this about me. I don't know if you do, Mason, but I'm not the biggest fan of Alvin Kamara. Uh, <laughs> you can ask Ben about that. Ben and I have had many discussions. He's not even a Saints fan. He's a Vikings fan. But I'm just not the biggest fan of Kim- Kamara. But I remember when the Browns were drafting and they passed on Barkley, everyone just went, whoa. And I was like, yeah. So, Interesting how they end up getting a really good running back still. Really great team builder. And now we go on to the AFC East, which I think is one of the more um, cool divisions to talk about. The first episode of this podcast that I did was about where Cam Newton should go. Episode one of the podcast. And well, Cam Newton went to the New England Patriots. And that's the first team we'll talk about. I think the Patriots were how I thought they were. Bill Belichick had those games where he's very defensive. Minded. He got good game plans against young quarterbacks like the Cardinals win, Count Murray, Chargers with Herbert, Ravens with Jackson. That's just what Bill Belichick does. He can shut down those quarterbacks. And overall, I think he kept this team together even with a, you know Tom Brady leading. That's a very impressive thing to do. However, I expected their offense to be a lot more in rhythm. That's something you talked about, but Cam just wasn't hitting it completely. Um, it was just, you know, this was a team that felt like they're a very old school team with the formations and running. Not that that's a bad thing, but I think that the defense is here. And if you can get a quarterback, just bring in some, bring in some new energy. I like how they gave Cam a chance. He didn't even look like Cam Newton to be 100% real. Get a new quarterback. Um, there's talks about them maybe going Chris Godwin. Or you, I would like them to go Juju. Get some energy on the offense. I think this team is competing for this AFC East because this AFC East has a lot of good offenses. So if you ever can have a good defense, 
you can definitely have some good gains and wins in this division. Um, I, the Patriots really met their expectations this year. I don't think anyone really expected them to be a contender. At least I didn't. Um, I think I thought they would make the playoffs at least because um, I thought Cam Newton would be kind of somewhat of his old self. He really wasn't. But at the end of the day, like, I think the biggest need for the Patriots is to get weapons. These They have – to Demir Bird as their number one receiver, Nikhil Harry. I mean, that's just not like that's not going to cut it at the end of the day. Like Demir Bird, Mason. Come on. I love Demir Bird. He's a he was he used to be a Cardinal. Love that mm-hmm. guy, but definitely not a number one or number two <laughs> receiver. Um, but no, they also had the most uh, defensive starter starters opt out this year, so they're going to get a lot more uh, studs coming back next year. Um, so that's a big plus for them. But overall, this team kind of just met expectations. But I like what you said. I feel like they they tried the Cam experiment. really didn't work. It's time to move on. I remember week one, Cam ran really well against the Dolphins. And week two, he threw really against the Seahawks. And people were like, let's go with Cam Newton. And then he never put it together. <laughs> so people are saying he, the Pats will be in the Super Bowl and MVP. I'm like, nope. Didn't have him. Like <laughs> you said, they met expectations. Didn't exceed them. Didn't lower them. Um, so it looks like one greens here. The Bills are next. I really love this team. Um, I was super high on this team two years ago. Um, and then this year I was like, let's see how they do. I thought their defense would be a lot more elite. But what was elite with them instead was the likes of the offense. Stefan Diggs, in my opinion, is a top five wide receiver which is very hard to be in, but I think Tyree Hill, Julio Hopkins, Adams, and Diggs are top five. The guy's elite with his route running, precision, and skill. And this Bills offense was just so fun to watch. I think that they had a lot of um, really fun moments in this season. I think they'll be Super Bowl contenders for about a couple years to come. So that's what I have for the Bills. Um, yeah, I'll go quick on the Bills because um, I think they really exceeded expectations and made the AFC Championship game. They got better as the season went along. Definitely not how they wanted to end their season with Josh Allen having to run for his life, basically. But um, Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs for the next couple of years is going to be fantastic. Um, I really feel like this team has a good potential, especially with Josh Allen at the helm. Yeah, I agree. Um, Dolphins. Love the defense. I think they were super great on that um, front. People, I think, are a bit too harsh on Tua. Yes, he wasn't this superstar quarterback throwing 50 touchdowns, but I thought he was efficient. I really like Brian Flores. And I think the Bills and Dolphins, these two teams, are going to be this kind of new rivalry in the AFC East moving forward. I could see both Miami and Buffalo reaching the AFC championship and winning it, winning it in the next couple of years. I think both of them can t- um, can compete with top tier teams. I'm really high on the Dolphins, um, so yeah, that's what I have for Miami. Um, the Dolphins, I really like this team. They went ten and six, didn't make playoffs, which is really sucks when you go ten and six and don't make playoffs. But Brian Flores, fantastic coach, really knows how to get the best out of all of his players. Tua definitely, you need to give him a couple more years. He showed flashes of really being amazing, and then you can't really just bail on him like that. Um, this defense, pretty solid, a little inconsistent at times, but I think that'll get better just as players mesh more. Um, I feel like they need a couple more weapons, get two of some help. Uh, but no, I really like what this team is heading, especially with Brian Flores as the coach. I love Brian Flores. Yeah, I think if they made the playoffs, he was going to be coach of the year. Also, Xavier Howard, people are not talking about him. He was fantastic mm-hmm. this year. The Jets, moving on to the AFC South. Uh- <laughs> Um, we have the Colts. Um, <laughs> I think that even with Phil Rivers retiring, they'll be a great quarterback, <laughs> a great team. Uh, I hope they trade for Carson Wentz. Um, I love a lot of pieces, especially Darius Leonard and this defense. I know that um, they lost Nick Seriani OC, to the Eagles. Let's go. But I really like this team, what they do. Um, you just look at the defensive pieces, like I said, and their offense. I think if they can get a good quarterback, the Colts can be um, up there for the AFC. I like how you pulled a wand division and just skipped over the Jets. <laughs> um, but, no, I completely agree with you with the Colts. I think they're one 
a pretty solid quarterback away from being contenders. Rivers, great guy, but he was definitely, I mean, not even de- – he's 100% on the tail end of his career. I mean, it was his last year. Didn't have the same arm strength, you know. Just not not up to Phillip Rivers that we used to know. Um, but if they get a guy like Carson Wentz, I think him under Frank Reich again, that could do wonders for him. Um, their defense is elite. They had a top three defense. They have some studs on that defensive front. Um, best offensive line in football. Now. Yeah, Buckner is fantastic. Best, best offensive line in football. Maybe get another receiver. Can never go wrong with another one of those. Jonathan Taylor, fantastic running back. Um, but, yeah, Colts are one quarterback away from being fantastic. And I think they did really good this year with Rivers. Yeah, and you win in the trenches in football. They have a fantastic O-line, a really great D-line. They're just a great team. Texans are a terrible team. No <laughs> idea what's going on um, there. Can't really speak on it. This past season, Watson saved them, but looks like Watson won't be there. I could see if Watson gets traded away, people just trash on this team, and Houston get like seven wins and kind of surprise people. That's what I expect. People, people like just trashing them. And the end of the season, be like, oh, they were not as bad as we expected. However, I don't think they'll be a great team. So I could have the Texans at like seven wins. I think the head coach they brought in, uh, he was with Baltimore, and I think he can run this team okay, but not too well. So Texans, I'm just not hopeful of. Um, Texans, they had, a, in my opinion, a one of the most disappointing years. I knew they had took a step back, but I thought they'd still make playoffs because they have Deshaun Watson. I mean, Bill O'Brien absolutely destroyed this team. He threw away their first-round picks, gave away D-Hop for a bag of chips, left Deshaun Watson alone. Um, and without Deshaun Watson, this team easily would have went 0-16. Without, without him, they would just be completely irrelevant. And I feel so bad for Watson. Glad he's stepping up for himself, though, and saying, I'm not going to deal with this. You guys have screwed me, screwed me over. I'm not going to waste my career here. Trade me. Really respect that, especially since he's a like a high caliber player. He absolutely deserves to be on a winning team. Um, overall, very disappointing from the Texans this year. Yeah, I agree. Um, the fact that Watson did play good really shows just how dedicated he is, as you said. Titans, not a lot to say. Ryan Tannehill was really good to watch. This offense was fun overall. Derek Henry was great. AJ Brown, really nice. I like this defense more than most. Tennessee. I think they're a 9-10 win team. I think they've elevated from 8-7 wins to 9-10 wins. Um, I like Mike Vrabel. Now it's a ton to speak on the AFC South. And I'll just go with the Jaguars real quick. Uh, I think it's an exciting team. Urban Meyer, Trevor Lawrence with those offenses pieces, James Robinson, DJ Chark. And I think that this defense is going to be really good. So, or. I, I know that they have, like, zero talent, but just the way Meyer coaches with Josh Allen. I see the Jaguars being one of those surprise teams. We get one every season. I think it'll be Jackson. I think Lawrence and Meyer just inject a lot of enthusiasm. So that's what I have to say about the Titans, Jags, and the AFC as a whole. Um, yeah, I'll go Titans. I like. I really like what I saw from Derrick Henry. Historic year from a running back. Always cool to see. The offensive player of the year. Um, this team does have a sling, though. They have no zero pass rush. Um, the quarterbacks have all day to throw, um, pretty much. Lamar Jackson had a field day in the playoffs, had a pretty solid amount of time to throw and just absolutely torture them. So they definitely need to up up their defense. I really like their offensive core. Um, I really like Vrabel as a coach. Um, this overall, this Titans team, um, pretty solid, honestly. Um, <laughs> And I really like uh, – I really just like this Titans team basically just because of Derrick Henry. He's so he's so fun to watch. This dude runs over everyone. And for the Jaguars, I'm a big fan of their future. Urban Meyer, great uh, hire in my opinion. Trevor Lawrence, I'm really high on him. I think he could be fantastic. Um, they, they're definitely not going to be a contender for playoffs next year, but they're building for the right um, – but they're building around Lawrence already, and they don't even have him on the team yet, which is just cool to see. Um, and I think this Jaguars team could be very dangerous in five years. I think the Jaguars are contenders next year, in my opinion, but I, I see where you're coming from. Anyways, that will do it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Till then, this has been Tanner Mason. Thanks for joining me. Peace. And we'll see you all next time. Peace.